This video is for you if you're interested in using pair programming, a strategy where two students share one computer in your class. First, make sure if you're using pair programming to explain to students why you're doing pair programming. Be like, oh, well, pair programming is a common industry practice and collaboration is super, super important in computer science, so this is one way for us to get to practice this. It can also help us debug together and really learn more. Number two, assign roles. So typically the students are going to be either a driver using the keyboard and mouse or the navigator who's providing support and managing some of the problem solving. So it's really important to tell students who's going to be acting in each role first. Otherwise the student who is just the mo most assertive tends to start as the driver. Additionally, I like to assign them to a computer. If there are two computers that they might use, assign them to one of those computers because I find even students feel like pride in getting to use their computer and might sort of pressure other people into using their computer. Number three, pair students with similar uh, skills at programming. So some of the most dysfunctional pairs tend to be ones where there's a really big gap in their skills. Those can also be some of the most productive but research suggests for the students in the lowest quartile, they do best if they're paired with someone else in the lowest quartile of performance. So I tend to uh, try and pair students with similar skills. Number four, uh, name common behaviors. So what I do is I work with a student to do a role play at the beginning of each class. So it's us, you know, in some sort of dysfunctional uh, pair programming interaction and in some productive ones. And what I do then is I say, oh, let's hear what was good, what was not good, how do you think Colleen said when the student said that, and talking through some of that. And what that does is that allows us as a class to name particular behavior. Like, oh, were you like issuing them a bunch of commands. And then when I see these behaviors in the classroom, I can be like, oh, remember that thing from the role play? Do you think that was happening just now? Uh, and it makes it easier to talk to kids about it. Number five, automate the role switching and timing. Students will by themselves sort of naturally switch, but the extent to which the students who are less assertive are going to get to have that time using the keyboard and mouse uh, is going to be limited if you're not doing automated switching, so having a timer or something like that. I find it's really helpful to have a timer that's visible on the screen. I wrote it in mine in Scratch, and it just plays music when it's time to switch. Uh, and that automation so that I can keep talking to students, helping students when that switching happens is really key. What I have students do is I have them stand up, give each other a high five, and switch seats. That way, if a student doesn't give up the driver role, then their partner ends up sort of awkwardly standing behind them, and it's easy for me to intervene to be like, yo, pair over there, get to the switching. Okay, number six, only interact with pairs. So if students raise their hand, I come over and I want to make sure that both of them have already discussed the problem before they bothered raising their hand. Something kids will do is they, you know, whatever, my partner won't know, so I'll raise my hand and ask Colleen. Okay, so make sure that when you talk to students that they've already talked about it together and then that you're really engaging the pair. Oh, what do you think about that? Okay, now let's hear from you. Can you take it up, pick it up from where they left off, etc. Last piece, number seven, use buddy programming. So buddy programming is a term, truthfully, I made up, but it's just where kids sit next to each other, but they're partnered. So when, when one of them gets stuck, they always turn to the other one, okay? So they're not sharing a computer, but there's a similar sense of ownership. So what I do is I pair students at first, and then after a little while, I have them switch to buddy programming. It establishes the pattern of collaboration and that this is who they're gonna go to for help, uh, but then allows them a little more flexibility to work independently and not get frustrated with their partner. Good luck introducing pair programming in your classroom.